Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tim and this is Tim the Trailman. And today I'm gonna to tell you about an experience that I had at Overland Expo East 2023. This is my first expo that I've gone to. It was a great time and it was a sprint for me and my wife. Overall, we only spent nine hours at the expo. We decided earlier in the week that we would go. So that meant Friday, it was crunch time. And from Atlanta to Arrington, Virginia, it's about a seven and a half hour drive. So getting off work, we got up there pretty late overnight. We did wake up Saturday morning, still had about 100 miles to go. And then we were at the expo from 9 a.m. to about 5 p.m. And then not knowing the area for where to camp or do anything like that, I decided just to hightail it back. So I was back in Atlanta at 11.55 p.m. Saturday night. Call me crazy. It's just what I wanted to do. It's how I was going to get it done. So we're going to jump into the expo now. And then we're going to walk through and see all the vendors and things of what I could experience as much in nine hours. The event does go from Friday through Sunday, but I only made it a Saturday and next year I plan on doing it more. So please tell me in the comments, how was your first expo and what did you do to plan on it? Let's jump in. So as you walk through the main gate, there's a ton going on. The field is huge and there's so much to see. So right through the gate, there's Tacoma Beast. Mateo was there. He's been putting a lot of work in this truck. He's running 39 inch tall tires now and he's got a supercharged engine with his new addition being these new portal axles from 74 Well, They look super clean. I saw them on Instagram when he first got them. Seeing them in person does it a lot more justice. They are amazing. They give him lift, track width, gear reduction, and of course he's already running 529s as well. But seeing them in person just makes it look that much better and the truck overall is looking amazing. There were a ton of these massive off-road vehicles that have tons of accessories or mods to them. I don't know the names of all of them, but to me, they just look super cool. The idea that they can get off-grid, and to me, they are more for an out west type vehicle. You're not gonna find anything like that in the Southeast being usable. Venture Unknown and Sean were there, of course, with his nonprofit and everything he's doing for the off-road community. This vehicle, another large one here, just every one of them is different. The insides, of course, I wasn't able to see. They're people's private vehicles, but the builds overall just look to be like a ton of fun. Things that you'd want to take down the road, down the trail, get off grid, get away from people, and just be gone for as long as you'd like and not have to listen to anybody or put up with anybody, and you're not going to be in any campgrounds, of course, with these types of vehicles, but you can see the bicycles on the back and the ability just to get to where you need to be or have a ton of fun. Each one of them had some notes here on the side like this taped to them. I tried taking video or pictures of them, but I didn't think it was going to show out very well. So feel free to try to pause it, but you're not going to like to be able to see anything going on there. This one was so big and so wide that it actually had multiple slides on it. And then the owner put a hammock on the back as well. With the slides, I don't know how much more room it gives on the inside but I bet you it makes that off-road vehicle feel a lot larger. The cool thing is that barbecue grill right there and just being able to hang out on what I would consider as a patio and what, just enjoying the scenery and everything. There's the hammock there. This one has a Caterpillar engine in it. We'll take a look at the notes here in a second, but the lighting is good. The color looks amazing. As we see a bunch of these, let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. For me, it's hard to choose as a whole. This one looks to be a nonprofit, Live the Globe. I was trying to get some video, there was a bunch of people around it, and they had banners and signs. I didn't inquire that much about it, but as a whole it looks super cool and I think it just speaks to the mission of overlanding and getting out and exploring and having a lot of fun and going to a bunch of different places. So it's cool to see companies or nonprofits just create an environment or experience for people to have and not have to own everything themselves. This could be the most exciting part of the expo. This is like Food Alley, if you would. There was food trucks for at least a quarter mile here as I take a walk down through here. You could get coffee, tacos, any type of food that you could imagine from a food truck. So I took a walk down here just to see everything that they could have. It was quite uh, an experience to see the variety of everything. But for me, I brought a lunchbox, had sodas in the cooler, and did not experience any of the food. But you're welcome to uh, see what they have to offer. And I'm guessing the larger expos even have more food trucks. But to me, it was great to see that it was an all-in-one environment or setting that you could enjoy the expo and not actually have to leave the gates. On a side note, you could come and go. You get a stamp on your hand and you'd be able to go back to your vehicle like we did. We were able to eat our sandwiches in the parking lot and then go back in. And with that stamp, no one cared that you were coming or going. This is a view from the food truck row. 
The field, I don't know how big it was, but it was great to be at Oak Ridge Estates in Arrington, Virginia. Lots of camping and then the track is where all the vendors are. Here is Outbound Off-Road. They make these campers. I didn't look inside too many of them, just kind of walked around and stayed on the outside. They look to be from smaller sizes that you can pull with something like a 4Runner or Xterra to full size ones that you might need a little bit larger vehicle to pull the weight. But there again, I don't know how much they weigh, the capacity, I don't know how much they cost. But if you're looking for something that will be able to keep you off grid longer, I think a trailer would be that much better and then you could leave camp set up and then go wheeling wherever you go. It was cool to see Revere Overland there. I didn't get a chance to talk to Rob and the team, but it was cool to see his Tundra in person. I've watched a ton of his videos as he's traveled out west and just learned a ton from him about creating YouTube content and then what it's like to be overlanding and equipment and things like that. So it was cool to see him at the expo. Here's Iron Man 4x4. This is just walking down one of the rows. There was probably 12 to 14 rows. I was there at the field for about nine hours just exploring. And so I didn't videotape every row. There's goose gear there. They have a ton of good products, but it was really hard to take everything in in just one day. The event was from Friday through Sunday though. This is called the Moab Project. They are a direct competition with Earth Roamer, in my opinion, which is super cool to see. These vehicles are built in Indiana and just another style, another size to get off the road and off the grid. So let's take a look inside and see what it looks like. And as I came in here, I instantly could tell this thing was decked out and way nicer than my permanent house that I live in Atlanta, Georgia. It's super cool. I don't know how many people it sleeps but the inside of it is just nicely done. You can tell the finishes are high quality. Little TV there, closet, a toilet with a window and a view, a sink, a stand-up shower with a skylight. So overall, it looks like to be plenty of room. I think two to four people could travel comfortably. A Dometic fridge and freezer that stand up. So we're gonna take a look inside here and see that you have plenty of room I bet you could easily take a week or two with you of food and then you have the induction stove top there with another sink right there. Okay, so this is the Enios Grenadier. This vehicle I don't know much about, but you can see it's kind of got these cool rails on the outside on the panels, the front doors, the rear doors, and the sides. I believe it may be sitting on a BMW chassis. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a new Land Cruiser, a Range Rover, maybe an old Land Rover. You can see the designs with the roof panels up top. I believe it has a BMW powertrain. That definitely looks like a BMW shifter. The inside looks minimalistic there with the screen and what appears to be an iDrive. So I didn't talk to anyone about it. I just kind of walked around and filmed it. You can see the snorkel there. And then underneath the powertrain here, it kind of looks like a BMW power steering reservoir, but they normally would have electric power steering. So maybe something different here, but tell me your thoughts on it. Check out their website. Okay, Harley Davidson was a vendor or a brand that I was not expecting to see at an Overland Expo, but there they are set up with their motorcycles. And here is Garmin. This is the booth that I did walk through and hang out for a couple minutes. They had a nice display and setup showing off their Garmin treads, the eight inch screen and the 10 inch screen. The inReach is incorporated into the tread and that's the one that I have currently. There's the Overlander there. I was mostly walking around to see if they had any devices that I was unaware of or anything new that they were launching at this expo. I didn't know of anything, but it was worth the moment to take and see if there was anything. And then there is their side-by-side -side or XL tread there with the buttons on the side. But it was cool to see Garmin and I'm a huge fan of them. This is Expedition Trailers. That is Lifestyle Overland. I did not wait in line or stand around to talk to them. Kevin. Sarah and Caroline with their newborn were there and that's Expedition Trailer. Midland of course was out there with their communications. I'm a big fan of them. I run the MXT 575 myself. They have conquered quite a few badges of honor with their Jeep. I don't know if it was that Jeep that conquered all those trails. I did not count how many antennas they have. I don't know who they can talk to, but I bet you there's not anyone out there that they can't talk to. So the first thing we want to think about, we think about recovery young, step out of your vehicle, right? Take a breath. Take a breath. We're not going anywhere, right? No need to be in a hurry. So many people let emotions get the better of them. Okay, so this is the GMC booth here. That's the brand new Hummer EV. Tell me in the comments, are you a fan or not a fan? 
but this is also blended in with the company of AEV and they have modified that Hummer with that rooftop tent. They had a GMC AT4X over there and a Canyon. So tell me what your thoughts are about that. Okay, so wrapping up my day, this is just a shot of the parking lot where people were camping and check that out. You don't need a built rig, a minivan with a tent or a screen over the back of it and you are camping and overlanding. I had a friend there that was camping, so just walking through the campsite area where people were parked and overlanding, taking a shot of a few of these rigs. So it's pretty cool to see what everybody's thoughts were on what they would be needing or wanting to enjoy the overlanding community. You can see everything from large vehicles to full-size trucks to Jeeps, the Gladiators, the Broncos. You can see people with ground tents, gazelles, rooftop tents. You can see people with winches or big tires or lots of lights or bumper jacks. Okay, so that wraps up the expo. That was 2023 Overland Expo East in Arrington, Virginia. If you were there, tell me in the comments. If you plan on going next year, tell me in the comments. And tell me overall what you think I could do differently to have a better experience next year. This year was, of course, fantastic. The weather was great, and it was a great turnout from what I could tell. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you for your support. It means a lot to me and the channel. And if you'd like to be a patron too, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash Tim the Trailman. If you'd like to see more content like this, hit that like button, that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I don't always film in front of my house, but when I do, there's an airplane. <laughs>